Welcome to The Real News. I'm Eddie Conway coming to you from Baltimore. Recently in Portland, Maine, there has been a case that have caught uh, my attention and made the headlines. And because actually, honestly, I was surprised to find that there were Black Lives Matter cases that's being prosecuted in Maine. Uh, so joining me today to kind of like give us some insight on what happened up in Portland, Maine, and why it's still going on after this summer, uh, is Mariana Angelo. Uh, she's a student at the University of uh, Maine, Southern Maine, that is, and uh, she's also a uh, organizer of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement there, and she is also one of 18 people that got arrested. And the case now is being adjudicated in court. Uh, Mariana, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Can you kind of explain, because I'm honest, honestly, when, when Maine popped up, I'm thinking, well, there's no problems up in Maine in terms <laughs> of Black Lives Matter. Uh, but apparently there is problems, and there was problems with the judge and problems with the case. So explain to us what happened and, and what's going on now. Um, so July 15th, um, me and some of the other Black Lives Matter organizers had decided that we really wanted to stand in solidarity with the rest of the protests that were going on um, that year and just that summer. Um, and just like you said, like it's Maine. I mean, no one really thinks that um, there could be anything really going on here just because we're so secluded um, from the rest of the country. Um, but we do have some serious issues that um, are going here. And we just felt like this was something that we needed to do. Um, we just felt like we really needed to be a voice for um, the black people um, and immigrants uh, that do live in Portland, Maine. Uh, so we decided um, to stop traffic. We actually went down into the Old Port, which is actually one of the like the busiest places um, in Maine. Um, it has all the, like the bars, the restaurants. Um, basically, that's like the most live place. Um, and we basically took over and we shut it down. Um, we exercised, you know, our rights, and we are trying to normalize civil disobedience. Um, but unfortunately, not everybody thinks the exact same way as us. Uh, so we, in turn, ended up getting arrested. Uh, so that night, um, 18 people were arrested. One was a minor, so technically it's 17. Um, so what they actually did is they broke through a barrier um, of... Uh, white allies um, to get to me um, and two other uh, uh, Black Lives Matter protesters also. So that's pretty much the gist of that night. Okay, well, I understand that the, the case was being moved to uh, restorative justice, judification. Yes. Oh, what happened? Oh, why did All that right. happen? Um, so re restorative justice was actually part of the conditions for one of our original plea deals. Um, so it actually took a very, very long time for us to even get to the restorative justice process. Um, but finally, once we got there, um, the condition was we have to agree to do a restorative justice and we have to pay for it. Um, we actually have to give money to uh, a charity of our picking. Um, and then we have to plead guilty to a civil disobedience charge. Um, and so once we actually do the restorative justice, um, the case would actually be put on a shelf um, and it would be actually put on a filing. So what they agreed on is if six months, once we put the case on a filing, once we do the um, previous conditions, we would be, um, we would not have any charges um, on our record whatsoever. So that, that was the agreement. Um, but unfortunately, um, just like this whole entire case, it didn't really go as planned, um, not from anything that we did. Uh, we definitely went in with good faith. Um, the problem with the restorative justice is one, it doesn't, it didn't really do anything to restore. That was a problem. It's like they, a lot of the people that were around putting together restorative justice, I don't think really understands the movement of Black Lives Matter. I don't think they really understood um, the trials and tribulations just between um, the police department here and people of color here, just because we don't make up such a large population. Um, I think, and it's also, there wasn't really a lot of dialogue between um, the arrestees and the people that were holding it. Um, we were unaware that the, the 
ADA was going to be there. Um, because this is still an open case, um, we were under the impression um, that she was not going to be there. We were not notified that she was going to be there um, because that would be us waiving our Fifth Amendment right by us going to a space without, a, without any of our lawyers. Um, so that crumbled very, very quickly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, apparently that is one of the factors that led to the judge reclusing himself. Uh, what uh, what actually, I mean, uh, led up to that? And uh, what's the status of the case now? Yeah. All right. So we were going to court to basically figure out, did we actually participate in restorative justice um, or did we not? Um, so basically, if we didn't, if we were found guilty, um, we would go to trial. Um, they were going to restore the case back to docket, um, and they were going to proceed on the track to go to trial. Um, but we were on the side saying that we did do it. We showed up with good faith. We showed up ready to do the restorative justice. Um, we were unaware of, you know, the third parties that were going to be there. We were unaware um, of the ADA being there without our lawyers um, asking us any questions, because anything in that room could really be used in the case. Um, and so that's what we were arguing. Unfortunately, um, the judge was extremely biased the entire time that we were there. Um, he, he was already using language like, wait, didn't the paper that you guys signed say per the direction of the DA office? Like he was saying things that would automatically make you assume that he was already on the side of the DA. Um, and then referring, um, he was referring to certain instances and using certain scenarios that weren't even in the case. Um, like reading articles that had to do around the case and trying to bring that in the courtroom without actually listening to both sides. Uh, and there was, I think our lawyer or the lawyer that was representing us at the time did a really, really good job to actually bring light on the entire situation and actually um, really going down every single detail that has, has actually happened from July 15th to now. Um, and the judge was looking at that as him being rude um, and not being respectful. Um, and so there was a lot of tension in the room. Um, and so that, that led up to him recusing himself. Mm -hmm. So what's the, now that he's off the case, what's the status of the case and what's the status of the, uh, 18 that's, uh, still, uh, uh, have to have this resolved? Um, well, right now, uh, we, after that day, um, they had actually tried to find a judge, I think, right when he recused himself, but obviously Maine's a really small state. Um, so they had just decided that they were going to go try to find a new judge, and then we were going to have another court date. So right now, we're still going to have to go through the motion again and figure out, did we do restorative justice or did we not? Um, at that, in that courtroom, the judge would kept pushing for, hey, why don't you guys just have a dialogue? You guys should just have to do another restorative justice. Um, and we were like, no, we have done it. We did it. We were there. We were prepared. And unfortunately, the ADA, the DA, and the police chief were not prepared um, and did not come in good faith. And so now, now we're in that limbo. Now we have to go back. And now it's just a round two. Okay, so when when are you expecting to know something about the the next step? We should know something within the next, I think, two weeks. But unfortunately, like we, this case has been going on since July, mm -hmm. so everything's been going on very, very, very slow. So I don't bank on us anybody really telling us anything for the next two weeks, um, because now. Now the gamble is, now you're going to have to find a judge that actually wants to deal with this. Okay, well, can you let me know in the, <laughs> uh, as soon as you know, and maybe we can talk about what the status is. Are you getting support from the uh, national uh, Black Lives Matter movement? Yeah, definitely. Like, we have a lot of people that from around us, especially around um, Boston, like, around that area. Like, a lot of people have been reaching out. Um, even Oakland have been, like, tweeting, being like, hey, if you guys need anything, like, we stand in solidarity with you guys. Um, just even people who probably aren't even a part of the organization, um, just people who are just watching and are just like, wow, we're really shocked. I mean, a lot of people didn't even know there was black people in Maine. <laughs> yeah. So yes. that was a one-up for us. Okay. <laughs> like, people didn't even know we were here. 
Okay, so let me know, keep me informed, and we will revisit this because I think it's important yeah. not to let it go uh, without some attention, okay? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. You guys have a great day. Okay, and thank you for joining The Real News.